the two side panels done Friday. So I had all the scalp strips done like early Friday. I got all that finished up. So I started working on my panels. I got these two done Friday, and then I worked on this one. I came in at like four o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, finished this panel up. I, I was here till about 10.30. I got it mostly done. So the only other thing I did Saturday, because I needed a break from this, was I, uh, I finished up my Zeus's on this back panel and trimmed this back panel for the shock mounts because I had made this panel on the rotisserie and then uh, obviously we didn't have shock mounts or anything on it because we hadn't we didn't have the housing when we got it when we had it on the jig and stuff so we didn't put any of our mounts on it yet so now that the shock mounts were on it I trimmed my panel for the shock mounts and then finished my Zeus's got those holes drilled so that panel got done and then finished up this panel did something a little different so I nut inserted since this is a stock bumper it creates a little bit more of a challenge because it's a little flimsy because it's all plastic so any aftermarket stuff you know like a composite bumper that's a you know carbon or fiberglass they're pretty rigid so they're a little easier the stock plastic bumpers like on a fox or I don't know any Mustang newer from a fox on is plastic so it creates a little bit of a challenge so I ended up nut inserting the bumper on the very back and then wrapped my panel under the bumper and then so on the inside I've got some scallop strips going along here obviously and then we have some with a flange on them so I flanged it and it's bolted here on the bottom of the bumper in a few spots and then uh, like I said, I, I nut inserted the rest just to hold the panel up to the bumper and stiffen everything up. So like the bumper is actually very rigid right now with everything that's holding it between the scallop strips and the carbon panels and everything because the carbon's tying everything into the back half because there's scallop strips on the back half holding it. And then uh, the scallop strips on the side, the scallop strips add a little bit of rigidity just because they're metal and they got bolted on. So everything's uh, actually surprisingly rigid. I was I was a little worried. I'm always worried with the stock bumpers because I hadn't done a S197 stock bumper yet. So turned out pretty good though. I'm happy with it. Nice. But I still got a little bit of trimming to do on the bumper. Um, I'm going to trim this lip off. I'm not going to change the shape, but I'm going to trim it in here and come up right to the edge. That way I get rid of this pocket because I don't want any air catching at, you know, 250 miles an hour. So we've already had some issues with bumpers blowing off of green Mustangs. So we're trying to keep that to a minimum. <laughs> So, uh, I guess we haven't had that issue, but he has had that issue. Right. <laughs> so, I'm eliminating that issue. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to cut this out. Not change the shape of the outside of the bumper so, you know, it still looks nice and like a factory bumper, not like a chopped bumper or anything like that. So, this shape will all still be nice and radius and all that, but I'll just trim it like right here ish maybe a little bit more than that and marker won't show up but something like that and then probably a little bit like straight right here something like that I haven't decided 100 percent yet but that's my my main idea and it'll uh just get rid of that air pocket and let the air flow out of the car without it catching and causing any weird turbulence or anything or possibly helping rip the bumper off the car. So we don't like body parts flying off. But everything else back here is pretty much done. Uh, they got the fuel cell mounted and the fuel pump mounted. Uh, fuel pump's not in it, but the, but the cell is. And then it's just a few things need finish welded, but that's it. I got the chute stub done. So this one's a little bit different than our normal, like just drag race stuff. This is 
a lot longer. So normally we like to trim the, uh, the stub that's coming off the chassis really, really flush with the bumper because it just looks better. And then the bolts on the inside. In this case, since this is a drag and drive car, it's all braced up on the inside. So I've got tubes coming down. So if you imagine like the back half coming down, I got braces coming off the sides, which is normal. That's what we do on our regular driver rigs, just regular, no drag and drive stuff. Then from to, from the upper tubes on the back half, I have inch and a quarter tubes coming down to the brace to help with this. Cause when you're towing a trailer, you get a lot of this. So everything is braced up in there and the braces come all the way out to the inside edge of the bumper, like all the way. So there's no way to get a bolt in there or anything. So bolt ended up being on the outside, which is fine. He's got his plan for his trailer hitch, but he didn't want to mess with trying to do that right now since we're on such a time crunch. So he is going to be doing that later because the first few races he's going to, he doesn't need a trailer hitch because it's not a drag and drive. It's just a regular race. So he'll do that later when he has some time. But I made it long enough. He can do his idea. He's going to do some tabs coming down with an actual like receiver stock in it that he can put just a normal trailer hitch in and then tow that. So shouldn't be too bad at all. And then I'm about to start working on shoots. So I'll, uh, we're waiting on some titanium to show up to do the, the support that the parachutes mount to. So once that shows up, I'll bend that up, get it made and then hang the shoots. And then pretty much everything back here is wrapped up, ready to go. The only other stuff that'll be back here is I'm a, he's doing uh, air launchers for the shoots. So there'll just be some lines and a, a little valve somewhere, but that's all stuff that he's going to take care of, I believe, until, you know, we're doing it. And he says, hey, can we mount this? And I'll go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we can show the my inner bumper mount. <laughs> This is my bumper mount. Uh, like I said, figuring out was kind of a challenge because the tub comes all the way back to here. So I can't like run a support tube or anything down to the bumper like I usually do because usually the tubs are, you know, here or so. So I can run something right down to here and it's fine because I can build a little structure or, you know, whatever. And the bumper supports it. Another challenge with a stock bumper versus a fiberglass bumper or a carbon bumper. So way more flimsy, just gotta roll with it. So I made these on both sides. This ties into my scallop strip structure on the bottom. And then in the top, it's all brazed onto the stock quarter panel. And then uh, I made a plate back here to cut off. There's a whole big bracket assembly back here. So I made a plate to cover that. But he also wanted the stock bumper harness for all the lights and everything. So I had to make a little hole for the wiring to come through. So that all still works. All the marker lights, all that'll all work. So yeah, this is all ready to go. It's all done, but just got some tabs with nuts welded onto them to go into the factory mounting holes. And then I just drilled them out to a quarter inch bolt. So it's all quarter 28 or quarter 20 hardware. So yeah, it's uh, been a bit of a challenge back here. This is always what takes the most time with any build is all the rear stuff because it's almost always different between the bumper somebody uses, whether it's a fiberglass bumper, a carbon bumper, they got all the challenges of it being a flimsy bumper if it's stock and a plastic one. So it's always the, the most challenging part of the build, in my opinion, is the back closing it all off and making it all look nice, function well, and uh, be right. <laughs> That's one of the things with stock body cars, you know, pro mod stuff or anything like that easier 
or anything with wheelie bars that has a big cutout of the bumper or something because it just gives you more flat planes to work off of. So flat planes are way easier. So that's why there's as many flat planes as I can make. I make them. Well, I say as many. You want as few as you can so you don't have so many pieces or any bends, but sometimes you have to make several. This one actually ended up being a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Because uh, S197 bumpers have a big panel on the back where those that rounded edges and everything. If you cut that off, there's a flange right there, and that's what I uh, cut off and bolted that bottom carbon piece to. So that actually worked out really well because our back half was pointed directly at it. <laughs> so it looks it looks really good with all the panels in it because it looks like it just comes down and stays at the same angle all the way back. So it looks it looks really good. But yep, Matt's been doing any roll bar things. And uh, yeah. I've been doing yeah, like, well, like, rear end things, yeah, like, doing wing things, deck lid yeah. things. I mounted the deck lid. Uh, so it's a, I don't know if it's a used deck lid, but it already had Zeus holes in it and it already had the wing mounted to it. So I just kind of had to roll with it and make it work. There was a few things I had to change a little bit, but for the most part, I was able to make it work. Uh,